Good morning and welcome to the Plant Based Morning Show presented by Compliment, lovecompliment.com. We got a fun show today uh, talking about whether fruit is vegan or not. Just when I mean, world turned upside down, fruit might not be vegan. Uh, don't know what to do about that situation. And uh, of course, we also will be getting into the great oat milk controversy, potentially the downfall of oat milk, uh, if you believe certain and Oatly. influencers, including Oatly. Even their ads can't save them, it seems. Uh, or maybe they can, actually. I, it seems like it's kind of overblown. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into all that and more. Uh, Big Media X Clause checking in first thing before anybody else. I meant to shout out Big Media X Clause today because I was looking at YouTube to set this thing up. You may have noticed we, we scheduled the show in advance today. Uh, and Big Media X Clause is just always coming in with the positive comments, even when the shows aren't that good. He, he or he, I don't know, <laughs> they say, great job. This is good information, whatever. Uh, Consistently, so thank you for that. Much more responded that. to our call for positive comments, and yeah, uh, is, right. is just embracing the that, right. that role. It's like one to one positive to negative now, instead of instead of zero to one <laughs> ratio. So it's helpful and good for the spirits. Uh, all right, Matt O'Connor's here. Britters, Dale Stevens, uh, Taborlin P ninety nine. I don't know that name. That's familiar. Mm. Or that's an unfamiliar new face with a cat avatar. So we gotta like uh, to Borland, Sarah Slump, Leslie Knight. Good morning to everybody, um, and you know more will be trickling in, I'm sure. Uh, all right, Doug, what's what's new in your life? I don't have a whole lot of new food news or anything. We just did our typical Tuesday night pizza night, where both kids are at practices, and it's all we can do to get a pizza into the oven uh, with the store bought. A frozen. It is. It is a whole wheat crust from Whole Foods, store bought, okay. already made, not even a dough, just crust thin crust mm -hmm. uh in this case whole foods tomato sauce too not even not homemade sauce which we often do homemade sauce that was on one pizza the other pizza was homemade barbecue sauce which aaron made so that oh. was kind of cool with some uh bar vq or bv what's it called i don't know the charlotte brand that is making this very good uh i don't know barbecue plant-based barbecue stuff so anyway that's you know our plane tuesday night but it, it's it's something but how, how do you, you make the barbecue sauce do you know I don't know. We have a we have a recipe. I believe there's ketchup like, in it. I think ketchup okay. is the base, but I could be wrong. It may just be mm -hmm. tomato paste or something. Uh, I can I can circle back on that one. Yeah, we did a uh, slow cooker lentil soup stew mm. soup. You love the humble humble lentil soup. I do love a good humble lentil soup. Anything with lentils, I'm a fan of. Uh, in fact, I even um, am planning to make a big batch of lentils this weekend for my breakfast again. I want to get back into that. I did that for just one week, and I liked it a lot. Yeah. And uh, I want to get back into that. It was good. Kenny made it. I didn't have – I can take zero credit, but it was uh, it was very delicious. A little baguette with it. Very good. Yeah. You know, I I never have lunches in the day because, like, for example, we do these these pizzas – they're mm -hmm. they're gone we just eat them up and then my daughter takes whatever's left to school and we never have lunch so i end up eating junk for lunch i realized i just need to make a huge bean dish and have it for the whole week something with beans in it mm. last time i did we did bean three bean five alarm whatever tacos from uh from cheap easy no i forget the, it's from vegan vegan roadie i think is his name uh anyway okay. his book what's that i said okay yeah, so we did that, and we, and we made a whole bunch of extra filling that we didn't ended up not needing. So I just ate that for lunches over rice for like mm -hmm. the whole week, and it was perfect. I like had good nutritious lunches. Uh, so I meant to do that. I forgot about it, but I meant to like make a bean dish at the beginning of the week, like a triple batch, and just have that let that run. Which I, I need to do that. I got to get on that. So lentils would be a good candidate for that. Yeah, uh, I am over the the name the calling of foods humble. I'm just ever since you said that that one day. Uh, it was probably about a year ago now. You said, I just love this idea of lentil soup, the humble lentil soup. I read it all the time. People talk about the humble potato or the humble anything. It's just, it's just dumb. I mean, we don't need to, you can say it about any ingredient because on its own, it's humble, right? I mean, any, anything is, just I don't humble. know if that's true. An avocado is. is not humble. It is true. Yes, it is. The humble avocado. <laughs> you, you can say if you Google humble lime? avocado, I'll guarantee you find an article about it. I would not, I would, I would not think a lime, I would not call lime humble. You think Literary of the... Hub how the humble avocado went from the unwanted, whatever. I mean, every fruit, <laughs> every food, people are going to say it's humble. It's, uh, it's dumb. Stop doing it. I every see. Food. I think, I think potatoes and uh, maybe like root vegetables in general and lentils are kind of what qualifies as humble, in my opinion. 
Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't right. call, I wouldn't call any fruit humble. I wouldn't call any most vegetables humble. Like any. You wouldn't you call know. the apple humble. The humble apple. No. No. What about the humble carrot? No. There's a whole website called humbleapple.com. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a book called The Humble Apple. Okay. All right. Well, you, you're, the, <laughs> you're the one who called the, the lentils humbled this morning. I, that yeah, wasn't me. Only because, only because you said <laughs> Let the record show. No, I didn't. <laughs> well, one time a year ago. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I've been noticing it ever since then. Uh, um, <laughs> well... <laughs> I do love a good uh, humble bean dish. I think that I think that's a good move. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, what what kind of bean dish though would you would you cook if you were gonna have something every day like that? I, I mean, no matter what it is, you're gonna get sick of it by like Thursday mm -hmm. for sure. So mm -hmm. it almost doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, like I do a, a red lentil curry thing, red lentil dal, I guess it would be called. Uh, very simple, has not much stuff in it at all. Maybe some onion but it doesn't even need that. And then you can just have that over rice. It's not like it's, it's humble, right? It's just it's a simple, it's, it's not meant to be good or like delicious. It's yeah. just a, it's just a nourishing thing that people probably eat all the time in different parts of the world. Uh, so, you know, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I like the old white bean with olive oil and garlic mixed in there, just sort of a yep. very simple, a humble uh, dish like that. You can put it over pasta Kelly Kay mentions uh, Rancho Gordo Bean Club here. She's not in it. She wishes she was in it, I'm sure, because everybody does. You, you can't just get in it unless you were early on it like I was back, I think, pre-COVID. We got in the bean club. Um, so we have a bunch of that from there. She says the cookbook Grist has a week's worth of meals from a batch of black beans. Mm. Yeah, that seems good. The humble uh, black there's... I don't like the humble black bean that much. Um, there's some uh, love for... Love for burritos happening here. Britters made breakfast burritos last night, which uh, I'm 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 a little bit jealous of. I mean, I did love my lentil soup, but breakfast burritos for dinner? That's that's my that's my, right. That's not right up my alley. What makes sense? I guess you put potatoes and eggs in there, or like vegan eggs, and that's suddenly a breakfast burrito. Like, yeah, yeah. Scrambled tofu or something. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just make dinner burrito and just not not bother with whatever turns it into a breakfast burrito? Because maybe want you want the egg or whatever. whatever. I mean, breakfast or dinner, people do that all the time, you know, pancakes. Or... Yeah, I know. But that usually would be like, because I'm kind of creating pancakes or something different. It's basically the same food. It just has potatoes <laughs> added to it. Yeah. Maybe no rice. Uh, do breakfast burritos have rice? I think of, I think of breakfast burritos as being like, uh, like scrambled tofu, beans, and spinach, and, you know, and then all the other. Yeah, right. Sure. Also, that kind of thing. A little different. Yeah, yeah. good enough. All right, good. Uh, what else is going on? Anything else going on, Doug? In the you know, not world? really. No. My dog got uh, neutered yesterday. That's going on. No, oh, okay. Interested in that. Good responsible thing to do. Humble. We had a we had our second bear visit in our backyard last night in in the last week. Uh, oh yeah. We've been seven years in this house. Never had a bear, or not never had a bear get into our trash. We've had bears walk through the yard before. Mm -hmm. Never get into the trash, and then twice in the last week, two different bears. Hmm. Um, that's funny. I know. Maybe so the last night, Eclipse is doing it. Maybe, but if you were on my street last night, you at around midnight, you would have seen me running through the yard in my in my undies, chasing after a bear, trying to get him to leave my trash alone. Mm -hmm. Make a loud clatter out there to try to scare him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, bear! Get out of here! I, I did exactly that. I have a video of me doing exactly that to scare a bear out of our garden during the COVID time when uh, yeah they were everywhere because it was it was just, I guess people weren't doing anything so nature reclaimed its spot. Uh, and yeah, I, I I stood down the bear. I had a dream about bears last night, Ozzy. It was very oh. funny, strange. Hmm. Who knows? All right. Um, before we jump into the show here, we got a couple things. British says potatoes in the cast iron, tofu eggs. TVP I make into a crumble sausage. That sounds like a pretty good burrito. Any mm. meal of the day. Yes. Um, Dale says breakfast burrito to me is is potatoes, beans maybe, tofu and peppers, onions and mushrooms. So yeah, nobody's saying rice for their breakfast burrito. Mm -hmm. Smash avocado or hummus toast topped with beans. Healthy and easy breakfast. Yep, yeah, that's that is a good one. Um, and then uh, Dale Stephen says uh, I used a ch tofu chorizo crumble the other day and it was yum. Mm like it all right good um all right well then let's let's go ahead and 
jump in here without further ado. Uh, weather report of Wednesday, April 10th. Get those taxes ready. Five days till tax time. Public service announcement. Are they due on the 15th this year, Doug? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was like the 20th or something. Well, it's usually Maybe the 15th, wrong. but let's see if... Uh... Oh, yeah, 15th. Monday, April 15th. So no no breaks this year. for a, No for breaks. A you're, you're, you gotta, gotta get it in. Get in there or file for have, you, have you filed yours? Where are you, Matt? No, I've been working on it the past couple of days, and uh, it's it's a nightmare. The crypto transactions, thousands and thousands of them, <laughs> and I just got to go through all of them and like <laughs> make sure it's not weird things with the software pulls. Uh huh. I mean, it's it's thousands upon thousands. That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> How about you? Have you got yours in? Yep, got mine in. Yeah, uh, we're good to go. We use an accountant, so that helps. Yeah, right. I do too. Shout out to my buddy Pete. If you live in Bel Air, Maryland. <laughs> He's in it now. All right. Um, here we go. Real, real weather report begins now. Um, apparently, consumers are being more selective about their meat purchases. This is from fooddive.com, big time site, not one of these uh these sort of low budget vegan surveys that you see sometimes. Uh 37% of those surveyed by uh, a group called 84.51 degrees. I don't know what kind of name that is, but 37% today are purchasing cheaper cuts of meat this year, uh, and 43% are cooking dishes which use less meat, such as casseroles, tacos, and only 12% are not stretching their budget purchasing meat. That's, I mean, that's that's the big standout number to me, that only 12% of people are not stretching their budget purchasing meat. Um, and that's, of course, due to food inflation, which has come down from its peak, they say, in mid-2022. Although I think this morning, the, uh, the latest CPI print came out, and it was 3.5%, higher than expected, and it's not good. Back into the inflation game, I guess. Wait, so what is only 12% said they're not stretching the budget? Meaning that, uh, what does that mean? I'm not sure. I didn't know how to quite to interpret. Did it mean they are actually taking steps to, to stretch the budget? Yeah. Uh, or sorry, that they're to, that they're not taking the steps? Or did it mean that like, it's just not a little bit of a drag on them having to pay this extra? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I'm not sure. But still, at least only 12% are like not thinking about it. You know, not, yeah. not changing anything. So that's a lot. I mean, that's that's... Pretty much everybody is is affected. Yeah. Um, and I guess I guess this doesn't help the plant beet or plant meat uh, cause because no one's going to switch because that's that's generally even more expensive than well than the cheaper cuts of meat for sure probably not as much as the most expensive cuts. Uh, but you know the price parity thing that's that's been one of the objections so that's not going to help the plant based meat cause. But switching to beans or whatever, which obviously if you're having yeah, humble lentil, tacos, yeah, the humble the humble lentils or whatever, then. That's what you should do. Uh, all right, other survey stuff. This one is from uh, veganfoodandliving.com, I think. They did their own survey. This is sort of the type I refer to where the vegans survey their own people. Uh, the big vegan survey, 2024, and the big thing that came out of that was that 74% of participants said they prefer the term vegan versus plant-based. So again, they're, they're just talking about vegans here who are answering the survey. No surprise there, in my opinion, that vegans prefer the term vegan because it is more clear. It's not as watered down, they say, as right. plant-based, and it tells you for sure that your that your food doesn't have honey or something else that might still be called plant-based. Uh, and finally, a pantomime. Do you know what a pantomime is? Yeah, I, you know, I had to look it up. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I thought <laughs> I knew what it was, and but I had to, you know, just confirm that I actually knew what it was. Well, I thought it was like an adjective that you used to describe a mime, like like the work that a mime does is oh, pantomime, right. uh -huh. I think, or, or that's a pantomime. He has a pantomime box where he's in, in that thing. Anyway, mm -hmm. I think it's like a show that they do over in the UK. Uh, yep. This happened before one of these it's theater Roman shows. Ties. What'd you say? It has Roman ties, I think. Okay, good. Is that what you learned when you looked it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this happened before. There was one theater and they, they got in trouble for excluding vegans. It said vegans not welcome or something like that as a joke, but that's their whole thing. They're always just joking about everything. So you don't know what's real, what isn't. Uh, in this one, they've come under fire. This is the, uh, the Everyman Theater in Cheltenham, uh, the Mother Goose production has come under fire for a song saying vegans are annoying, anemic, and gassy. Uh, the song apparently says the G in the word vegan stands for gassy. The A is for both anemic and annoying. Uh, and and they, uh, I guess people are upset. There's a girl uh, who, who said that people started, she's vegan, people started singing the vegan panto song to her. Uh, and so they have, they have pulled this song. They've responded to what the crowd wants. They respect all of their audiences, views, and comments. They say, pulled the song from the show. Uh, Gloucester Sears, Tweety the Clown, who plays Mother Goose, 
is is out. There's no, that that line is gone. Song is gone. So I don't know. Is this good, Doug? Is this a good thing? I mean, if we can't if we can't make fun of the fact that the more you, beans you eat, the more you toot, or the, <laughs> how the fruit, then I mean, then, who, then who's going to? I mean, we have to. We uh, like we should be able to laugh at this. The anemic thing's a little uh, unfortunate, but uh, the gassy, the annoying, we can laugh at that. Yeah, I'm with you here. I mean, the whole thing exists to be a jokey, an irony, a parody of stuff. This is this is you know benign jokes about vegans. We're gonna get made fun of. It. I mean, that's it's what happens when you do something most people don't do. So uh, th- we got to get over this. Let the let the funny people do their funny stuff. Let the let them do their funny thing. Yeah, we can't be offended at every joke. Exactly. And finally, uh, UK headquartered Corn Foods, Q U O R N, one of the worst names in my opinion still that you could have as a as a plant based food company. They have withdrawn from retail in Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, which I mean, this is big time news. We've talked a lot about vegan restaurants starting to serve meat, these vegan meat brands going under that happens all the time. Now, uh, maybe a little less in the past month or two than we had seen before that. So that may be a sign of, of changing tides. Um, but corn's a huge one. I mean, they've been around longer than anybody making the, the micro protein meats. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this and Netherlands and Belgium hotspots, or at least Netherlands is a hotspot. Uh, so I don't know. It's, this is crazy to me that they are going out of business. I mean, if it's them, then when, how long till impossible and beyond are gone? Uh, I don't know, but they say, uh, losses in distribution, challenging market conditions, such as inflation again, and rising cost of living crisis. They will over there in the UK, they will always blame rising cost of living crisis for anything. Maybe rightly so. I don't know. Uh, but it is universally affecting the consumer and competitors across the board. They say, so I wonder if corn is just getting left behind, you know, maybe because not all their stuff is vegan, right? And uh, I feel like they, you know, they've been around forever, but I don't really associate them as like being leaders in the space as far as like tastiness. So, yeah. And once Limp Biscuit came along, it was kind of like, who needs corn? I know, anymore, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's the same thing, but it's cooler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can't talk about corn, Q U O R N, without bringing up corn. No. The Britters, our, our metalhead, uh, mm-hmm. mentions it all the time. Somebody mm-hmm. else did before too. Jonathan, some I'm mean, Jonathan Davis wow. is the lead singer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Much like I, I don't even know if Limp Biscuit came after corn or not, but in my mind, corn was kind of doing it first, and then Limp Biscuit made it cool. That's exactly what's happened here. Is corn was doing this stuff, but they're kind of getting replaced by much cooler brands, and they're not adapting. So I don't know. I'll look. <laughs> I might up on corn. And I don't really think of corn and Limp Biscuit as being like the the same, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm more like Slipknot or something than corn. That's probably right. That's probably it might I don't know why. For me, it was kind of corn and then Limp Biscuit. But you're right, corn corn was heavier. Limp Biscuit was meant for poppy. Yeah. Which is exactly what's going on here. Uh <laughs> the, the, the corn products were kind of meant for hardcore vegans. They, they I don't think they were aimed at mainstreamers very much because they started like in the 80s, I think. Um <laughs> yeah. but anyway, Dale, I, yeah, I don't Dale know. Dale says right. that. Limp Biscuit needs to come back, and you you say that, and it's funny enough. Just recently, uh, they were playing a I don't know some sort of throwback festival or something, and uh, everyone got so excited about uh, Jump Around. I mean, just like went crazy. So maybe they are having a come. Jump Around is not a you know, like Limp Biscuit song, isn't it? No, it's uh, House of Pain. No, well, whatever, whatever the Limp Bizkit song is that everybody. Okay, Nookie. Yeah, Nookie. That's what it is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, British saw Limp Bizkit open from Metallica. I left Woodstock '99 before Limp Bizkit showed up. Thankfully, uh, I had no <laughs> desire to see them. Just, Rolling just never liked Limp Bizkit back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah. is the is the '90s bands doing? reunion tours and coming back and doing that is that like unique to this decade or is it just now i'm now that i'm this age i notice it i don't like, know our parents favorite bands doing the same thing maybe i don't know i mean right because they're all they're all back i mean blink 182 is back yeah uh, jim blossoms they never stop jim, i mean some of them never stopped like green day never stopped they kept going but uh, i mean why I would know. you just keep, keep cashing in yeah Jacks. i mean at yeah. some point like Green Day's been able to show out to sell out big stadiums still, I think, or, or big shows anyway. Yeah, they probably but never stopped. Some, yeah, yeah, but but some some of these bands like they just the the shows. Oh, have I to thought Jim Blossom. 
Axel Jimbosm's with uh, oh my God, what was the band that did uh, Two Princes? Here's Two Princes who <laughs> Spin Doctor. <laughs> I saw Spin Doctors and Spin Doctors at Harris <laughs> Cherokee, and it was a depressing show. This was like not, I and mean, this was 2015 or something. So they were uh -huh. even earlier than that. So they weren't even that far past their prime. But it was it was a sad crowd there for that, and like that they were real good at the audience pump up tactics because they had to like get the audience into the show. You could tell they were used to doing that. It was mm -hmm. not good. Not a good. That's funny. All right. Um, Ruta says, I found a 36 pack of eggs at Walmart for 609. I don't know. Are we talking about inflation still? Is that what that is? Yeah, or he's been maybe? talking about the cost of eggs and meat by himself. I think. Yeah. Well, bird flu, I think, has put, put the egg prices up. Uh -huh. um, Ruta is saying meat and eggs are, are, and fruits are worth it on nutrients, nutrients per calorie. Even though they're more expensive foods, they're worth it because you get so much nutrition in a calorie. And if you're talking about calories, as no, I guess he's not. He's saying nu nutrients per calorie, not, not calories per you know, pound. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it's true. Meat, meat does, I think have a decent amount of nutrients, things that, that aren't the fighter nutrients, of course, that are in plants. Um, anyway, I don't know. All right. Um, that's it. That's the weather report. Good that's one. It. I like, I, like that's yeah, it. I didn't expect that one to be so good, but who knew we'd get into Jonathan Davis, <laughs> Fred Durst talk. <laughs> uh, all, all right. right. So, Oh, fruit. Yeah, Talk headline and story of the show. It's a short one, but it's it's interesting and it was eye opening to me. Uh, this is from Plant Based News. the The headline is Weatherspoon warns lemons and limes may not be vegan. It's a pub chain Weatherspoon. It's not just one chain. Uh, it's funny. You look at this, like the picture of this thing. It looks like what you see in an airport, in like the the it place really kind of staking really being a British does. pub. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and I guess that's what a British pub looks like when it's a chain, uh, exactly like what they look like in the airport. Um, they said though they're uh yeah they're, they're, they have a new supplier and they've put up a sign saying that we cannot guarantee unfortunately that the fruit garnishes are vegan. I think they just did this at one place in their Bristol location, um, and I, it's just I don't know it's it's kind of shocking to me. First of all, why this could be makes you wonder. And Plant Based News explains that uh, Tesco, a supermarket over there, had to do the same thing in 2022 when they labeled some of their citrus fruits unsuitable. And the reason is beeswax and shellac. I believe shellac comes from bugs, uh, yes. insects, and it is not. Oh, it's a resin that is secreted by an insect onto tree trunks. Uh, so I, I actually thought it was something you had to get, kill the bug to get. Mm. But I'm sure that's what they're doing. If they're if they're harvesting the shellac, they're not going out in nature and getting it from tree trunks. They're they're having insects and doing it. Um, so anyway, those things are on the the, the peels of fruits and and apparently like it's it's not uncommon I, I don't know how common it is but they basically said uh you might not want to give up on citrus fruits altogether it's possible to find vegan friendly unwaxed fruits at supermarkets although often these are the organic ones which can cost twice as much uh so does that mean like when i'm not when i buy non-organic oranges conventional oranges which is pretty much all the time and lemons which is also pretty much all the time that I'm that I'm not getting vegan food. I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. Um, what maybe philosophical whether that's considered vegan or whether it's on. No, oh, like what what foods it's on and what we use here in the United States. If it's beeswax or if it's something else. Right. Um, I think that uh, and for, there is some some from plant I'm looking at now. Car carnauba. C A R N A U B A wax and mm -hmm. yeah, can that candelilla K C A N D E L I L L A wax. Those are both coming from plants, mm -hmm. um, and are alternatives to beeswax and schlack. So I, yeah, I mean I don't know. I'm not sure. There's some big conspiracy theory about the wax and Bill Gates and something like that. <laughs> <Is> there... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean. So they they do uh, appeal to the definition of veganism, which they always do in this kind of article. Everybody always does in this kind of article, and it's from the Vegan Society. Which I wonder why, like that, is universally said. Like this is the definition, but in that definition, it says that uh, being vegan is about avoiding animal exploitations and products, quote, as far as is possible and practicable. Meaning that everybody's going to have a different uh, 
definition really of, of how far you have to go to be vegan. You basically couldn't be vegan if that part wasn't in there because it's in, it's in everything, cars, houses, and this, this, everything. So this one, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not going to start paying more for organic products because organic, like these are the fruits that you don't buy organic because they have mm -hmm. a huge thick peel on there to protect the fruit. So by the time it gets to your mouth, uh, you know, you're not consuming many pesticides. So like, I, this just wouldn't stop me. Um, and partly that's because I don't really value the insect lives the same way I value non-insect lives. I will admit that much. Uh, if this was, if this was, you know, bone marrow or something from cows and I would, this would be a concern for me, a major concern. Uh, but with insects, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's just not something that has, that has moved the needle for me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I feel the same way. Uh, uh, you know, I wish, or I, I would hope that more of what I'm buying is, is a plant-based layer than, you know, than something that's coming from bugs. But, um, I don't think it's going to change my shopping habits. And, you know, as, uh, did you read the quote at the end from plant-based news? Sorry, I was looking up appeal, which is the, uh, the Bill Gates backed one. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, did you, did you read the no, quote at the end? No, okay. Quote? Which I just appreciate it. It's, um, this is plant-based news is just, um, do vegans need to avoid it? And then, you know, it talks about the definition, right? Yeah, so, yeah I read it. Yeah, I read it. Um, and then and at the end, it's like, uh, if, if you, um, if you've eaten waxed orange or lemon lately, you shouldn't panic over it. I, I appreciated that from plant based news. Yeah. You were about to go into a full plant panic. No, but I just, I like that mindset, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, that's, I would say about literally every food there is, unless it's going to kill you. You shouldn't panic over having eaten it. Happens all the time. We, we order something. It turns out I had mayonnaise in it. And you took a bite of it or whatever. And then, I don't know. Well, I mean, whatever. Yeah. But the, just, okay. So uh, the other thing that stood out to me about this was that <laughs> this, uh, I was impressed that this uh, Irish pub chain even knows anything about this and like was posting a, a sign. For it me. is surprising. It seems like they just, it, they could just not say anything about it. I think yeah. people would in general assume that, I mean, someone who cares enough about this stuff would already know that pretty much any stuff they get at a restaurant, the lemons or citrus is, is potentially non-vegan. So it just seems like, why would they really bother to do this? I mean, they're really looking out for, you know, the 0.01% of vegans who care about this. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that. 0.01% of people who care about this. Maybe, maybe more of vegans do. So yeah, you're right. And good on them for that. That's, that's a, yeah, that's a good thing. I don't know if it's the wisest move, uh, <laughs> but it's good. I don't know. Made me a fan. Yeah. Next time you go to the airport, I'm going to do a weather spoon. That's, that's the British <laughs> pub McClellan I'm looking for. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, and here's the other one. We kind of got into some of this stuff yesterday, but this just was rather alarmist headline. Uh, it's from the standard.co.uk. And the headline is, where did it all go so wrong for oat milk? And I haven't really noticed that it is going so wrong for oat milk. I kind of thought oat milk was it still with uh, the numbers. And as far as numbers go, like they kind of are, uh, they do point out in this article that the growth has significantly slowed. Uh, they only made a 0.3% growth in volume last year in the UK and the UK is where the vegan hotspot is right now. Um, they're saying this kind of growth is minuscule compared to its 2019 20 sales. Uh, so it has basically stopped growing there, but like, as far as like market share, I think non-dairy milks are, are doing better than any other vegan food category is, That's uh, right. or, you know, vegan, vegan alternative category is, I should say. Um, so I kind of thought oat milk was doing well. Uh, they mentioned though, this woman, Andrea Valls, who is an, uh, an actor, uh, and she made a viral video has 7.8 million views right now. And she's saying, She's, she's playing the part of cow's milk when she hears you've quit oat. So she looks like this sort of Cruella de Vil character with one of those long cigarette holder things in a fur coat looking thing and mm -hmm. saying, saying, well, 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 like you've look, who's come crawling back. You're back. Have you, you had enough of her spiking your glucose? Have you, it's, so she's, you know, she's playing the part of the woman who, who was left for another. And now I become, come, someone comes crawling back to her. Do you want me to play it? Yeah, go ahead and play it. Okay. It'll take a second. Um, but so what's interesting, if you go back to, uh, I mean, of course, every business wants to, wants to have growth, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but 
if there was such a mad rush spike of uh of growth you know in the last couple of years like wouldn't some leveling out and not shrinking but actual leveling out mean you know kind of be a healthy right. thing for a lot of companies yeah i heard i thought the same thing i thought like it's it, no company can keep growing forever it just can't happen uh right. and like you don't just because something has not has stopped growing it doesn't mean it is less popular it just means it has stopped growing in popularity um right. but, but perhaps the way things work maybe it's kind of cyclical and if you're not if you're once you're at the top of that spike it means that you know people are going to start dropping off soon and after after this leveling out comes decline yeah i don't know but that's a good point i had i had the same question okay right, we got ready yep. yep yeah i think so <clears throat> uh let's see here oh no we don't hold on sending me to a new page probably north korea's uh government website where is it TikTok, right thicker the cream on it just like mom used to make mm. oh come on <laughs> i hear it here we go. Oh, there we go how long we known each other now mike <laughs> too long <laughs> i wonder if you ever get sick of hearing me moan this, a, know, just go this is viral you. this is i mean this is terrible makes you want to bear your soul this isn't it this is another one. Milk my wives part three. Okay, so we need part one. <laughs> <laughs> you got a I mean, viral hit okay. and you piling on the sequels to go. it. Here we go. Here we go. Well, yeah. well, well. Yeah, so I was sort oh, of just looking on, on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok for some um, inspiration. Let's go. We can hear it. Well, well. Look who's come crawling back. <sighs> Had enough of her spiking your glucose, have you? I should have known what you were up to from the start. All them years ago. Stopped ordering me and your Costa. It's painful. Started ordering her instead. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop. Okay. It's, it's pretty long. We're not even a quarter yeah. way through. So she um, has 55.7 thousand followers. So not a, not an A-lister by any means. But 8 million views on that video. So Yeah. It's, it is, it is making waves. Um, yeah, her Instagram page says she has 40,000 followers. She's an actor repped by United agents. Uh, she says better believe Oatly had something to say. Maybe, maybe Oatly responded to this thing. Uh, I'm not shocked at all that Oatly would jump in there with some, probably something cringy <laughs> thing in response. But, <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't seen this, I had, you know, I missed this, um, viral video, but, uh, I have seen plenty of people bashing oatmeal, right? I mean, we've talked about it before. Yeah. We talked last week about how the GI index, um, mm -hmm. which is what is, what is GI? I'm suddenly glucose. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm blanking on the name of GI. Glucose index. Uh, what's that? Glycemic glucose index. index. Glycemic. glycemic. There we go. Uh, people were saying that that was high on oat milk, very high, like equivalent of something said to a 20 ounce Coca-Cola or something. Uh, a lot of that seemed to be overblown. When you looked at the glycemic load, it was actually much less than that. Uh, it was in the medium category. It was the very upper end of the medium range of this, the GI index. So kind of just seemed a lot, uh, much ado about nothing. But anyway, uh, this article is kind of saying the same stuff like sugar is the main thing they're talking about they're saying this is pulverized oats and once you do that you've broken the whatever matrix of the food and now the sugar is very absorbable and that is all true um and grain contains lots of starch so you're basically drinking starch water when you were drinking this and that i think is mostly true so i am not here to say that like this is this is you know just like eating whole oats um which I think would be totally fine to eat whole oats. I'm not, not one of those people who worries about the anti-nutrients or whatever in oats. Uh, but, but I mean, the amount is just pretty low. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more sugar. If you get an unsweetened variety, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little more sugar than cow's milk, but not a whole lot, uh, less protein. And then they get into the things like the additives, uh, carrageenan in some of them, uh, other emulsifiers and things that just aren't great. Some nutritionists they talk about or that they talk to, said as long as this is like you're just eating a regular amount of these things and you're not getting that stuff all the time all day long and all your different beverages and foods uh it's just not an issue and that is definitely where i come out on it i don't drink nearly enough of this that it would really matter at all um 
but I don't know. I'm kind of on the side of oh, oh, this is fine. I, I don't know. I, I, to have this in your coffee or whatever. I don't think people are drinking bottles of this or drinking eight ounce glasses. And even if you were, I think it'd be fine, but I don't know. It just seems overblown. Yeah. I mean, right. If you put it in your cereal, if you put it in your smoothie, in your coffee, like how big of a deal is this really? Um, I mean, this goes back a little bit to yesterday's conversation around, um, you know, food shaming, right? And, uh, and you know, is it, should we talk down about a food or not, <laughs> even if, if it's not a health food or whatever? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that I would call oat milk a health food, but I would certainly wouldn't call cow's milk a health food either. Um, right. And, and so, I mean, I don't know. You just, you, you use it to, to cook with or to put in your coffee and, and that's that. And that's fine. As long as you're not guzzling a gallon of it every day. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is still a processed beverage. It's, I guess it's, it's more processed than like a, sm a fruit smoothie would be. because in the fruit smoothie, mm -hmm. you're still drinking the fiber of those fruits. I think in the oat milk, you're not, they're, they're, they're definitely blending them up, but then there's certainly going to be some discarded portion of this. Yeah. Um, the thing is though, like once you get into the nutrition stuff, there's always like an alternative that answers kind of each objection one might have about this. <clears throat> like if it's protein you're concerned about, cow's milk definitely has more protein, but then you can go over to soy milk and you can get much more. Mm -hmm. And soy milk also has like zero sugar, at least on the uh, the little chart they put at the bottom of this article. I'm sure I, obviously there are sweetened varieties that that have much more than that. Um, and then if it's, if it's uh, what was the other? I thought there was something else. I can't think of what it was. Uh, oh, if, if it's like the uh, the processing stuff, you know, Oatly uh, has has some clean label version now that only has the four or five ingredients. I think sea salt is one and lemon zest or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but like none of that, none of the carrageenan or other emulsifiers. So like you can always find something that has what you want. They also have a no um, sugar version, Oatly does. Right. So, I mean, whatever your concern is, you can find a version that addresses that one. Um, you know, and so like, You've got all these options. Cow's milk is one of them, but to me, cow's milk has its own problems. You get the the uh, hormonal hormonal activity of dairy in general, and you know the protein in cow's milk. I don't really think is something a human should be wanting. And most other diets, by the way, that like animal products like paleo uh, and I think keto, they're also not fans of cow's milk. So I, uh, it's it's not just vegans who are saying cow's milk is not a healthy food for humans. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I just don't think that's a better option. I, I actually don't think any of these are that good an option. I think mostly drink water, um, and and you know a little bit use these, but they're they're not meant to be like what you drink all the time. Yeah, I think you can make your own with just it's just literally oat and maybe some salt or something. Yeah, you could do your own without the emulsifier stuff. You'd still have this kind of idea that you're drinking starch water, like that's still going to be true, right. and you're not getting right. the fiber that comes with the oats unless it gets blended so down that you actually are and i don't know actually uh, we've never made oat milk uh but when we mm -hmm. made almond milk like there's always this big discard part yeah uh, so i and don't there's... know did you know only invented oat milk they mentioned that in the article in the 90s really i didn't think I did not yeah and I, I wondered if like the o y the l y at the end of a of a company name like i thought that was like a 2010s uh movement when people started doing that wow brand. yeah I was surprised by that. Maybe, maybe respect them a little more. I don't, I don't know why they've had to do this dumb thing with their ads to make it <laughs> ruin it. <laughs> I did not know that. That's cool. They've yeah. created a whole market. Yeah, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I don't, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing much to say. Vegconomist has a little, I guess it's a response to the virality of some of these, uh, these claims against oat milk and they basically say the stuff that we've said it's it is high in sugar uh i mean it can be certain varieties of it can be you can also get the no sugar version if that's what you want uh is it low in milk in nutrients yes it is sort of low in nutrients but it's often fortified with things like calcium vitamin d and b12 um and i don't know like is cow's milk when it's not fortified does that have a lot of nutrients in it micronutrients i know it has obviously a lot of calories uh i'm sure it has calcium right yeah, I, I, yep. um, but I, don't, I think that usually they're fortified in D, right? Um, fortified in D. So I don't know if if cow's milk is a, a nutrient powerhouse either, uh, but I don't know. It, it might be. I just don't know. Um, yeah, and then they mentioned the additives that are in some, but uh, you can you can get some without it. So I don't know. Yeah, um, this this won't change my habits. I got a uh, Starbucks. My fourth one of those Starbucks. Uh, What's the olive oil drink? Oleatos. Oleato? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, on the way home, my drive home from Florida. Late at night. Not late. It's 5 p.m. 
I was, I was just getting really tired. Terrible long day of driving. It got worse by traffic. And I got an oleado with oat milk, but that's probably the first time I had oat milk in, since the last oleado I had a month ago. Yeah, so I'm just I, had a, I had an oat milk latte yesterday. It was delicious. Homemade or bought at local Black Mountain shop? Bought at local Black Mountain shop. Can you name the shop? Or don't yeah, Dynamite. Mm -hmm. What is it? Dynamite? Yeah, Dynamite. Dynamite Roasters. Classic place. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good oat milk uh, latte. I do not think that they upcharge you either with the uh, with the oat milk for the oat milk. You didn't, you didn't boycott Dynamite once they started allowing having Wi-Fi in the place? <laughs> no, no. No, I use the, their Wi-Fi all the time now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Mr. Jeffrey says, I think all cow's milk is fortified unless it's raw. That is probably true, but I do wonder the raw or unfortified version, how much, how much nutrients does it have besides of course the, the macronutrients like protein and fat, uh, and some sugar. Um, all right. Mr. Jeffrey says, send them a sticker as featured on plant-based morning show. You should do that. Doug. Yeah. The dynamite. I should. <laughs> they display that. And, and know, knowing that if they did, they'd be looked favorably upon by the local government in general when it came to <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, though, no, I think I mean, that's a great idea. <laughs> we should have stickers. We just hand out to any. Yeah, we any should have an intern we... who sends those things out to every company we ever mention. Uh huh. Uh huh. Here. Along with the, um, along with the uh, mugs that we're going to be making, right, Matt? Yes, we are going to have mugs and new t-shirts and mm -hmm. a whole lot of good stuff. Some hoodies. No, I do yep. want to make those mugs. I think it'd be great. Mugs would be awesome. And we mm -hmm. can send the stickers. Mr. Jeffrey, you could have a sticker that says featured in the Plant-Based Morning Show. Time and Ooh, time again. Oh, there you go. Day. Yeah. Well, I'm sure people, everyone has been shouted out here. All you have to do is say GM in the morning when we start and you're featured. Your name is red <laughs> on the air. And then you could, you could display the sticker proudly. There you go. I love it. All right. Come on, mugs, says Bridger. All right, I'm gonna get the mugs done. That's some of this. We got a, we got a handful of action items for sure with the show we do. to do, and we gotta get get it's going. gonna be it's gonna be lit. Everybody, you, you consider yourselves part of the ground floor of the plant based morning show. One of the early adopters. It's gonna be all over. <laughs> How early are they? It's been like, it's almost two years now. I know, but <laughs> early as in before we blew up. It might be lit. I'll, I'll say it might be lit. We don't know, but we'll see. But we do have some we do have some things to do. So I, I won't get on this. All right. Well, that's our show. Uh, thanks, everyone. Hang on. Wait a minute. Big Meat X Claws, who I, th I thought was a vegan, says, raw milk is so good. I stopped drinking factory milk when I did a farm tour and learned they piss and shit into the milk collectors. Yeah, okay. Well, that's That's interesting. Gross. But I, I thought Big Meat X Claws was, was plant-based or vegan. I didn't didn't know. Uh, I did, too. They were, they were not. A twist fine, in though. our Big Meat X Claws. Uh... Yeah, right. Story. Uh, but but by the way, like I hope people realize that like it's called plant based morning show. Someone asked us a long time ago why we call it plant based and not vegan morning show, uh, and we said it was you know just kind of reaches further. People don't like vegan so much, although today we just learned that vegans do. Um, but it, I don't think we mentioned like we did name it that way, and we name we call things that because we want it to be inclusive. Like I want people like uh, mm -hmm. like uh, Garuda to be able to show up here and and hang out. I don't know if Garuda would consider himself plant based, probably not. Uh, but like. I don't know. This isn't just for, for hardcore vegans. This is for people who just kind of want to be entertained, if you can call it that, uh, yeah. talking about these topics. So it's not, it's not just for vegans, for, for anybody. All right. Um, Here we go. 90% vegan. I don't drink cow's milk anymore. That's that's the yeah. Here we go. EDX class. Good. You ever had raw cow milk? Raw cow milk? No, never. And uh, I, I, milk has always just been a little bit gross to me. This is speaking not as a, not as a vegan, just like, even when I was a kid, it just if I ever thought about where the milk came from, I just didn't want it at all. But I, I drank plenty of it and had cereal all the time. But as long as I didn't think about where it came from, because it just seemed mm -hmm. gross. Uh, so I raw just seems even worse. Yeah. What about you? You ever have it? Yeah, I had some in college. I tried to make cheese. I went through this phase where I was trying to make cheese and I had a mm -hmm. raw, a raw uh, milk guy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, and okay. you know, so I would, I would sip it every once in a while, but it was it was for the cheese. It wasn't for drinking. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's like just it's so fat heavy. And it's just mm -hmm. like it separates. They don't skim it at all. It's not you don't have like some raw skim milk. No, like he he's literally just uh, what I, he was just milking it into a jar, and then give me the jar. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. British sums it up nicely. The Garuda legend situation. Garuda is like our extended cousin uh, <laughs> at the dinner table who brings up controversial topics to talk about, but we still love them anyway. Uh, yeah, that is true. And in this case, Garuda has done exactly that. It says cow's milk is healthy, period. Uh, end of statement. I'm actually mm -hmm. surprised to see that uh, Garuda is, is pretty informed about things that are healthy and things that are, you know, has different opinions than most of us, but definitely informed. Garuda knows about the blue zones, always points out that, that there's not a vegan blue zone. There's the one that is somewhat vegetarian, uh, the Loma Linda one. But I, I'm, not, I'm surprised Garuda says cows are healthy, is healthy because in the blue zones, which is where I get a lot of my form, a lot of my health opinions, uh, they don't drink cow's milk very much at all. It's goat milk, it's sheep milk, it's some that don't have this uh, A something protein, A1, A A I, I don't know. I'm going to butcher this, but uh, I know there's certain like hormones and things, or not hormones, certain amino acids that are not in certain milks. And they think that's why these things are better. Um, but I don't, I don't know anyone who thinks cow's milk is really healthy, like any health person who thinks cow's milk is healthy. So mm -hmm. you will have to expand for us, Garuda, uh, another time. I'm very curious about this. All right. Um, yeah, we will wrap it there. Yes. We keep going, but we're not, we're not going to, we're done. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. So tomorrow will be Thursday. That'll be our most fun plant-based morning show of the week. Hopefully, assuming there's good content to talk about. And then Friday, we've got the afternoon version of basically the same show, plus Isabel and sometimes Matt Tolman. Uh, should be fun. So please keep coming back. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your comments, engagement, all that stuff. The show would not be any fun without all that. So uh, that's it. We appreciate you. That's it. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.